Hi, and welcome to the show with no name, because chances are this is going to be a one-off. But if more does come of it, then it will no doubt be called Whiskey Geeks, because that's kind of what we do here. What I have today is something a little bit special, and I'm a little bit excited about it. The nice people at Drinks by the Dram sent me this. It's one of their tasting sets, so as well as tasting some interesting drinks, hopefully, I'll let you know what I think about the service. Uh, it's not just loot crate for drunkards. But as hobbies go, whiskey drinking isn't cheap. Even if you take those collectors who are never going to open their bottles out of the equation, it's still pretty expensive to get a nice drink, and it's understandable that you're not likely to make a risk or take a risk when you're going for an unknown label. You tend towards something you know and something you're familiar with. If you're going to spend 30, 40, 50, 60, too many pounds on a bottle. So that's where these guys come in. They sort of they give you the opportunity to buy you by a small amount, and so there's less of a risk. They give you something to try, and you don't have to justify buying a whole bottle of something that you may not like. And then there are those sublime drinks, these ridiculous, the overpriced, amazing drinks that are just priced outside of Morton means. Uh, the Lafoy 30-year-old Cardis. It's amazing. Possibly the greatest whiskey, definitely the greatest whiskey, possibly the greatest thing I've ever tasted. It was released in 2008 and it cost about £500 a bottle. These days it will cost considerably more. I, I probably would have gone without ever having tasted it, but I went to Isla and had a distillery tour over the tasting and that was included. It's amazing. I went to a bar later nearby and they sold them by the shop for £25. Still a very expensive way to get your drink, but it's it's more reasonable than the whole thing. Again, it's something that you might end up with something a bit special that just wouldn't be normally something you'd go out and get. Drinks by Graham said, I'll send you a sample box, and I thought, hey, I get a chance to talk to people about scotch. Great. Relatively knowledgeable, not an expert by any stretch, but uh, I know enough to ramble on a little bit. And then I find this bowl, and it's uh, Japanese whiskey. That's not something I know much about, which is probably great for you, because it means I'm not going to talk as much. But Japanese whiskey does have a bit of a history. It goes back to the late 19th century, I want to say, but don't quote me on dates. And the story I generally trot out is that a couple of very wealthy Japanese importers went to Scotland, loved the Scotch so much they thought they'd buy a whiskey industry. So they did. And the very few Japanese whiskies I've tasted have actually been surprisingly good, and they've been very influenced by that Scottish flavour, or the, the, the history that goes with that drink. So let's see what we've got here. It'll be interesting. Well packaged. Okay, opening the box, you get a nice little insert of a tasting guide. I don't generally go for exploring the complexities of a nice drink. I like it, but I don't go for the fancier poetry a lot of it, so let's go with. Uh, sometimes it's fascinating to read these, and I think it's definitely worth having a look at them while, while you taste it. Uh, it. You can read it, see if you, uh, if you imagine those flavors, does any of it resonate with the stuff you're drinking. But don't necessarily go out looking for, let's see, uh, hints of flowers and a little oak, for example. See what you find, see what you agree with. The actual grounds. They have a simple but kind of classy label. It doesn't look cheap, but doesn't like you spend all your money on them. Um, I do like the Maker's Mark style wax um, seals, where the question is will I be able to open them very well? Let's see, we have. Hibiki Japanese Harmony. Yeah, 
there's a way of opening these. It's gonna go for a bit. Otherwise I'll be slurring even more than usual towards the end. Hmm. It's not the thickest, I don't think this is going to need a lot of water. It's, there's a lot of... Okay, I'm not going for the poetry, but there's some like, uh, citrus, orange, a peppery back end to it. Oh, there's a lot of pepper. It's, it's nice. It's a, I didn't make fun of this, but there's a, a wooden oakiness to it. And lots of pepper that kicks you. There's not a subtle hint of pepper that. This is it's a peppery, woody, enjoyable drink. I wouldn't know a very good start, and a drink that I wouldn't normally have gone for. I might end up putting a little bit less into my drinks. So we'll probably cut out me opening these seals. This is Nika whiskey from the barrel. A lot darker coloured. I'm guessing some of these, or all of these, are actually have, um, they've actually had colours added. Stop the angels from getting their share. So, yeah. Nico whiskey from the barrel. Let's see what it says. This is this is very similar to the last one. It's got that um, spiciness to it. Lots of it's almost cloves. There's that that citrusy flavour still there. The Isla lover in me is tasting a little bit of peat. Not a so Add to the flavor a little bit. Um, it's got better legs than the last one. Uh, it's, it's a bit thicker. Just a little bit of water. Typically, free up some of those. It's, it's, it feels like there's something more complex there that's just not being allowed to go up because that strong clove flavor. Hmm. Yeah, that brings out the peatiness to it and the sweetness to it. It's very nice. It's just having a look at what they say. Long and fruity with a little bit of oak and spice. That oak and spice is definitely there. It's breathe it in after this. Again, not something I would have normally bought, but I'm very happy to try it. Next. Yamazaki. This is, interestingly enough, the only one I've tasted before. Not this specific distiller's, dish, um, distiller's reserve. But it is my introduction or was my introduction to Japanese whiskey. So, I'm hoping for something good. 
Interestingly, this is the only single mod one. All of the rest are blended. It's shock horror, right? Some of you may be turning your nose up at that. You think of blended whiskies, you think bells or teachers, and assume that all blended whiskies are cheap and nasty. No, those whiskies are cheap and nasty because they're cheaply made and taste nasty on their own. Not negating a drop of coke. A talented blender, on the other hand, at a nice place, can be an artist with a huge range of colours at their disposal. And they can produce something really unique and special. Um, the only one that comes to mind at the moment is, uh, weirdly, a famous grouse one. It's called Black Grouse. Oddly enough, that stole a lot of peakiness from um, Isla, but it was a very enjoyable drink. And it was blended. And quite cheap. So yeah, that's one to think of. Don't dismiss something because it's blended. But yeah, well, in the same way, don't assume that something single malt is going to be special. Another thing to note is if your drink doesn't specifically say it came, ooh, that's not going to tell me. If your drink doesn't say it specifically came from a single cask, chances are there was a bit of blending involved anyway. Distiller is hire very talented, very lucky people who get to sample every offering from every cask they make at different stages. And they use that to create a consistent flavor for their bottling. So that you have uh, bottles from different years tasting surprisingly similar given the fact that the aging process can be considerably random as the results you get. It has legs, you see the thickness of it and alcohol content. It's very whiny, so... It's a lot mellower than the last one, so it's not have a spiciness, no kick. It's more, there's a subtle uh, distance of wine aged, and it's so much vanilla in it. That sticks with you right to the end. Very mellow, very drinkable, very enjoyable. Oh, it's got some peach in there. It's nice. Hmm. It's definitely one of the more complex ones. I can see where they've got a huge chunk of this, and it develops. I can see you, you starting off a night with this, and ending with the taste drinking completely differently than the way it did at the beginning. It sort of it evolves as you drink it. Let's hang a little bit more. Yeah, the, the slight splash of water opens up a cherry and raspberry and red wine and white wine and it's just... <sighs> you could sit very easily for an evening with this. But I don't have an evening, so we're going to move on swiftly. I'm going to collect glasses there. Okay, Nika again, pure malt red, red colouring. Look at it. Can I finish without? No.
Oh, well, this is... This is dried fruit and sherry. And... Oh, very full-bodied. Oh, hang on. It's incredibly mellow. I recognize. This is... Uh... This is very nice. This... It's dried fruit and raisins and plums and really good quality and jam. Oh, that's a very nice one. There are a couple of these that are going to get uh, bought by the bottle. There's a lot of sweetness to that one. And especially afterwards, you get this um, strong dried fruit at the beginning, and then after that, it's just it's caramel and treacle. And I want this on like Halloween. Dark Winter's Night. Very quiet. This would go perfect. Oh, yes, please. And finally, Toguchi 12 year old. Interesting fact about blended drinks it's entirely whether it's uh, your own. Bottlings from a single distillery or blended from multiple ones. You can have age. Uh, most, maybe, most of these are no age specified. This one does. The 12 year refers to the uh, youngest cask that, was, that went into this. So you buy your 10 year old before you know that 10 years is the, the shortest amount of time that's been aging for. Whereas you go back to some much older ones to have different notes. Keep my note. I'm aware that I'm not really pouring enough of these to judge their legs. That said, this one's nice and thick. Let's get Oh. You may have uh, noticed, mostly because I said it outright, I love Isla whiskey. Peat is the flavour for me in my scotch. And this has some. Oh, there's an interesting mix. It's, um, it's citrusy again. It seems to be a recurring theme in these drinks with uh, lemon, lime, and Strong dried apple almost. And it's got that peat that just lingers afterwards. I'm gonna put some water with this one. It's like they took a, a nice Isla Scotch and then cut it with something from Space Side, like a, an Avalor. Or one of the, the really good Talaskas. Oh. There's a huge breadth of flavours involved in it. It shouldn't work, but it does. And it's delicious. I did not expect much when I saw that I got. And the Japanese one. I knew they had some good scotch, uh, some good whiskies. Um, things like some record. There are definitely two or three bowls which belong on my shelf. Um, 
So there you have it. Um, in summary, a lot of very nice drinks. There was a recurring theme of um, fruit, lots of citrus. Um, the memory of it is bringing lots of blossoms. That sort of the Japanese imagery does fit. But there's so much traditional scotch in there that the I love the space-side sweet and fruity selections. It's, um, brilliant. And this is a great way of doing it. Um, yes, they gave me this box. No, this isn't sponsored. There are a lot of drinks that I would have normally not bothered trying full price because the price of admission is too high. But to have this breadth of experience, a little boss box, um, once I finish this video, I will calculate how much this would have cost, and I'll put it here if I could do some video editing. But I'm pretty secure in saying that that's a lot more than I um, would have normally spent on a few tasters. Um, yes, you don't end up with a full bottle of whiskey to drink afterwards, but there's that. There's no risk. Um, this I think costs about thirty pounds for the selection. The only thing I change is the size. There's not quite enough for you to share with another person, and it's a great opportunity to get a friend together, taste some new whiskies, have a chat about them. You could do it, but you definitely want to have something in reserve for later on in the evening. And this is a very good way of just experiencing a huge breadth of drinks. It's the next best thing to living next to one of those bars with an extensive selection. Or even better, because you don't have to deal with any of the people there. So please, everybody, head over to drink. Oh, it's, it's how this works. Head over to drinks by the ground. And thank you very much to them for sending this. I very much appreciate it, and I'm looking forward to sharing the rest of this content over a good conversation. So cheers, salante, or kampai.